Hi, my name is Dan and I'm one of the DT evangelists here at Digital Tutors. In this video, we're going to look at a question from one of our users, Glutamat, on how we can access the legacy render layer presets for ambient occlusion within Maya 2011. So to illustrate this, I just have a very simple scene set up. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the render layer presets that I'm referring to, before Maya introduced the ability to uh, use things like render passes in the 2009 version, there were a few presets that one could access within the render layers. Now, since version 2009, they've been hidden away, but they're still accessible. So let's take a look at how we can set those up. Now to begin, I'm going to come into my render layers. I'm going to start by just copying my master layer just so that we have a new render layer to work with. Um, I usually prefer to not work within the master layer um, if that can be avoided. So I'll go ahead and right click on this and go copy layer. And that will create a, a duplicate copy that we can work with. So we can call this say our ambient occlusion render layer. Now, in order to access the presets, uh, we want to make sure that the layer that we want the preset to be applied to is selected. Come into Layers and open up the attributes for this layer. Now, once we have the attributes open, we'll find a Presets button. And in here, we'll be able to access things like Luminance Depth, uh, Ambient Occlusion, Normal Map, Geometry Mat, Diffuse, Specular, or Shadow. Now, in this case, let's go ahead and apply an ambient occlusion. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to uh, be a very quick way to set up a shading network. And then it applies that shading network. As we can see, it's set up a surface shader with an ambient occlusion node plugged into the out color. And it applies that as a, a layer override for this entire layer. So while it looks like things have gone black, if I were to hit 4 to go to wireframe, we can see that uh, things are definitely still in our scene. And when I go ahead and render this out, we can see that we're getting a nice ambient occlusion pass, or ambient occlusion layer, rather, uh, here in our render. Now, if we wanted to adjust any of the settings for this ambient occlusion, um, since it does basically set up a shading network, we can access that within our hypershade like we would any other shading network. Um, now, they're not showing up here, so let's go ahead and uh, just move one of the tabs in order to refresh the view, and we can find our surface shader here. So if we open up the input and output connections for this shader, we can find uh, that it's connected to the ambient occlusion node. So if we just open that up, we can adjust any of the uh, settings that we would expect to find within this ambient occlusion node. So say if we wanted to uh, increase the samples just to kind of help with some of the graininess, and as you can see, by increasing the samples, we've gone ahead and kind of smoothed this out a little bit. Uh, so this is before and then after. Now, if you want a little more in-depth look at this particular ambient occlusion node, uh, we do have a video dedicated to this on the in the Metal Ray Nodes online reference library. And if you're still not really sure whether or not you'd prefer to use these layer presets over the uh, render passes within Maya, I recommend checking out the render passes in Maya course in order to get a nice in-depth look at how the render passes uh, can be used. And then you can determine which method would work for your project. 